right, uh, five minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Last night, as I was uh, waiting for that storm to finally come and go, I was watching yeah. I was watching columns of water, Robin. Literally columns of water falling out of the sky. And, and uh, hopefully everybody's okay out there. But I got a good book for you to... Uh, consider reading you know it's a lot of electricity out in our community right now because of oh that storm. yeah you know you don't need electricity to read a good book you don't need electricity to read any book actually <laughs> <laughs> uh we have on the phone uh so, such an honor to have ken followed on the phone he is the author of the new book his new book is called a column of fire it's a thriller novel and i don't know what can tear up a uh a community more, a storm or a conflict between two disagreeing uh, groups of people. This story takes place in 1558, and let's say good morning to Ken Follett. Good morning, Ken. Good morning. It's great to be on the show. Where are you calling from? Where are you? I'm in New York City. All right. So, nice. uh, oh, so you're, remember you're, you're, se- you're, you're remembering September 11th of 16 years ago in that city, right? Uh, that's exactly what we're doing, and uh, I've got to confess that while I'm talking to you, I also have the the TV on with the sound muted for the um, remembrance service that's going on right at the moment. Yeah. They're reading out the name. This, this morning would have been dedicated to that memory, except for the fact that we just got out of a hurricane, and so basically all of the reporting this morning is, is regarding that hurricane. So this is a nice break. A good book is always a good way to, to take a break from something, right? Well, and I'm, I'm I'm very glad that we're having the conversation because uh, when I saw that my interview, my live interview was with a Florida radio station, I thought, I hope those guys are going to be able to get to work to yeah. interview me. Well, you know what we did? We stayed here. That was, <laughs> no, no doubt that was the least of your worries, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to pretend that this is the most important thing on your mind. <laughs> And, and and just to switch it back to the to the New York memory that that the World Trade Center was a column of fire. Not to uh, be too trivial. Uh, what, what's the good flippant? I don't mean to be flippant, flippant, but you know, in a way, I don't know. Sure, sure, no, but I understand. I, but but that's how it was. It was it was it, 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 that's what why it was such a terrible shock to everybody because uh, the event itself was was so spectacularly unbelievable we all watched it didn't we and we all yeah. thought this can't be happening yeah yeah it was it was very surreal so g- give us a, a thumbnail sketch of the story uh, you've got a, a, you must have spent 10 years writing this book it's so big uh, but give us so they can maybe a, a one minute kind of synopsis i guess well, it did take me three years, not ten years, and it began when I read that Queen Elizabeth I set up the first English secret service, and that made me think, you know, okay, this is the 16th century, uh, and they're wearing doublet and hose, and they've all got Shakespeare beards, uh, and yet they're doing many of the things that spies do today. They're doing surveillance. They're intercepting messages. They send, they use codes. They have people who are expert decoders who can unravel any code that's that's put in front of them without having the key. And it just intrigued me. That was my way into this story. Mm, It just intrigued me to think about all this espionage stuff actually going on in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Wow, that is fascinating. And so you, you take it from there, and, and with the code uh, deciphering and, 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 and the sharing of information, and you weave a story. Well, it's, it, Queen Elizabeth I was uh, the target of many assassination plots. Right. She had done something that offended all the powerful people in Europe. She had turned England Protestant when most of the powerful countries in Europe were Catholic. And so she became public enemy number one. And there were many assassination plots. And so she needed to protect herself. So she set up this secret service. And the man in charge of it, the real-life historical character, in charge of the first secret service was called Sir Francis Walsingham. And he plays the role that in the James Bond films, there's a character called M, just one letter, M, and he's the spy master that James Bond works for. And Sir Francis Walsingham was the first character, first real person to play that role. Oh, really? So, so that's but, uh, but, yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, it's it's I so you can see how I got more and more fascinated with this real life story. So I invented a young man called Ned Willard, and he goes to work for Queen Elizabeth the First, and he becomes involved in her secret service, and he becomes one of her secret agents. Wow, I had, I had no idea, but but this would be, and, and this kind of explains some of the 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 struggle between Protestant and Catholics today. Well, I, I, I've got to tell you, it's uh, one of the things that attracted me to this story was that the 16th century is a century of terrible religious warfare. And although uh, rival enmity between Catholics and Protestants has really cooled down to almost nothing today, thank goodness, uh, nevertheless today we do know, don't we, what religious hatred means. And we know yeah, about yeah. people who want to kill uh, everybody who's got the wrong religion. And so it struck me that at the same time as writing a story set in the 16th century, set a long time ago, I, it, the story would have resonances for modern readers. And they would, while thinking about, while reading about this 16th century story, they would also be able to think, wow, that's a little like what's going on today. So it doesn't even come out till tomorrow, correct? Tomorrow's the release date? Tomorrow's the publication date. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, you, and you're already... You've got, an er you've got an early copy, Larry. But you're already number 15. <laughs> you're already number 15 on the list. Am I? I didn't know that. You That's didn't know good. that? That must have been <laughs> oh, yeah. pre-orders. On the Amazon charts, you're number 15. Wow. And it hasn't even sold any yet. How is that possible? <laughs> well, that's really... Well, it's, it, it, I guess they have been sold. They just pre won't be delivered until tomorrow. Yeah, pre-sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's really good. I'm pleased. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> but uh, Ned, uh, <laughs> Ned has uh, emotional troubles of his own, though. I mean, he's he's there for the Queen, but he also has his own love interest. Indeed, he does, and uh, uh, of course, one of the one of the terrible things that happens whenever you get this kind of conflict between people over something like religion uh it always happens that you get people who fall in love with somebody from the wrong side mm -hmm. and that certainly happens to ned willard he is in love with marjorie who's a who's a catholic girl and a very devout catholic girl, a very sincere catholic girl she's a she's a she's a heroine she's a wonderful woman but um there is a big problem it's, a, it's kind of like Romeo and Juliet, and in a way, every love story is Romeo and Juliet, isn't it? Because yeah, two yeah. people fall in love. And there's no story if they just get married and live happily ever after. That's, that's, nobody's going to read that story. <laughs> this is the problem. Right, 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 right. Uh, 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 Romeo and Juliet, the problem is that the Montagues hate the Capulets. But you, but it's the same story whether you know one of them is Jewish and the other isn't, or one of them is black and the other's white, or one might be a German officer in the Second World War and the girl might be a French girl in occupied France. Uh, but all love stories have something like that form, don't they? Because if, they, if there are no problems, there's no story. Makes it more interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, thank Certainly you for coming does. on the air to share this with us. It's an honor, and you've given us a break from talking about that hurricane. Um, this was called A Column of Fire. I have a copy of the book, so call me if you want the copy that was sent to us. Ken Follett is who you will look up. If you're uh, uh, familiar with Ken's work, then you already know he's an outstanding author. And this is the first day it's on the charts for Amazon, and it's it's debuting at number 15. Now, in the music, That's awesome. In the music world, that, <laughs> that would be a Michael Jackson album or a Beatles album. That was... <laughs> they they were one of the few that could do that in the music world, so uh, I think it's pretty impressive that you did it in the literary world. Well, thank you, and, and I'm very pleased. Uh, Ken, thank you. Do you ever get to Florida? Uh, now and again, yes. Now, in fact, um, uh, my ex-wife, of whom I'm very fond, has just uh, bought a house in Florida, in Naples, Florida. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Did, were, you, were you keeping up with her? She had uh, all that. She, I mean, they got the brunt well, of the I, storm. Yeah, I, I, uh, w she was very worried about it, but it's okay. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah, I have a friend down in Naples too. He's, he's, he said he stayed there too. So I, I was kind of worried about him. Uh, thank you so much for being on the air today. A pleasure. Thanks for having me on the show. You're welcome. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs>
The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Hurricane warning and flash flood watch in effect. For the rest of the day, remaining mostly cloudy with a few showers and a thunderstorm in the area. Strong winds subsiding as rumor pulls away. An afternoon high 79 to 89. Tonight, partly clear.